So we have here our air conditioning and refrigeration lab. Uh, and I'd like to just first give an overview uh, of the different parts of this experiment. So we got two main parts. We got a top part, a top section in which air can go through uh, this circuit up here. Uh, and we also have a refrigeration section uh, and we'll cover that in just a second. So for the top part, for the air conditioning part of this lab, uh, air will be drawn in through a circular duct. Uh, there are two temperature probes here that will measure the wet bulb and dry bulb temperature. We also can measure the flow rate uh, through this manometer or determine the flow rate. So uh, the air will travel through here. It will go through another uh, or pass by another set of dry bulb and wet bulb temperature probes. Um, we can go through a preheater, which can be turned on or off. Um, we then have another set of dry bulb and wet bulb temperature probes. We have our evaporator unit to possibly cool the air. Uh, we then have another set of dry bulb and wet bulb temperature probes. And then finally a reheater, which can be turned on or off. Uh, here is our blower, which is causing the air to actually circulate through the system. And another set of dry bulb and wet bulb uh, temperature probes. And finally, the air will exit out into the lab through this open damper. So here we have our refrigeration part of the overall unit. Let's start here with the compressor. So our refrigerant, R134A, is gonna enter the compressor. The pressure is gonna get boosted up. Here is our exit line. It is then going to go into the condenser where it will reject heat to the environment. Uh, it comes out of the condenser. It's gonna go through a couple other devices which aren't important for the purposes of this lab. Uh, and then we have a pressure gauge to measure the pressure of the condenser. Uh, it will then go through a flow rate meter so we can measure the mass flow rate of the R134A through the circuit. Uh, it will then go through an expansion process somewhere along this line, and then it will enter the evaporator where it will absorb thermal energy from the air that's traveling by it. Uh, it will exit the evaporator here, and we can then uh, measure the evaporator pressure through this analog pressure gauge. It will then pass by this pressure regulator, which is not important for this lab, uh, eventually winding up here back at the compressor. Uh, there also are temperature probes here that will allow us to measure the temperature uh, both before and after the compressor and before and after the evaporator. So now what I'd like to do is introduce you to our center panel. Um, there's lots of switches, lots of dials, uh, lots of display panels, and we're not gonna use all of the equipment, but we are gonna use many of them. So uh, let's first turn on the unit. Uh, we have a main power switch right here, and I'm already assuming you've plugged it into the wall. Okay. Let's go to the right side of the panel now to talk about some of the switches. We have our blower switch here, which will turn on our blower back here, which will allow air to circulate through the top part of the unit. We also have a compressor switch, which will turn on the compressor to our refrigeration uh, part of the unit. Um, we also have, uh, for the preheating section, we have two preheater coils. One is 0.5 kilowatts, another is one kilowatt, and we can turn those on with those two switches there. We also have two switches for the reheater section, which is after the evaporator, again, a 0.5 kilowatts and a one kilowatt switch. Now let's move over to the left side of the panel. Uh, we have a dial here, which will allow us to adjust the uh, blower. Uh, and so the, the higher we turn this on, the faster air will circulate through the top part of the unit. And we have another section here, which you're gonna use a lot, which is the display panel for all the different temperature gauges that we have in our system. Um, now these are uh, numbered in a certain way. So the uh, one, three, five, seven, and nine, so the odd number uh, values here correspond to the wet bulb temperatures at 
the five different locations in the top part of the unit. So if I wanted to know, for example, what is the wet bulb temperature uh, at the very end of the circuit, that would be the, uh, the, the temperature probe number nine, and I would just turn the dial to nine. If you want the dry bulb temperature, um, those are the even number temperature probes between two and 10. So we have two, four, six, eight, and 10. And again, I can just dial in to whichever temperature I'm interested in. Um, we also can observe the evaporator before and after um, temperatures. That would be 11 and 12. And also for the condenser, we have uh, the condenser in is 13 and the condenser out is 14. So the first thing we need to do is measure the flow rate of air uh, through the top part of this system. And we're gonna do that when the blower is running at 100% speed. So the first thing we need to do is go over to the blower switch on the lower right corner of the panel and turn it on. And it will be a little noisy at first. Uh, it's gonna get a lot noisier when we turn this up to full. Okay. And now that we have a lot of air circulating through this system, we're gonna to go to the front where we can make our uh, flow rate measurements. So we have here a pitot-static tube that's pointed toward the flow coming in. And you need to be uh, as careful as possible to try to make sure that it is aligned uh, directly into the uh, direction of the flow. You can raise it up and down by loosening this nut at the top. And this is connected to a digital manometer that we can turn on. And this measures the uh, pressure differential uh, in inches of water. The next thing that we need to do is to determine the state of the air that comes into this top part of the unit. And we can do that by knowing the dry bulb temperature and the wet bulb temperature. So the dry bulb temperature is recorded using this thermocouple that has no wetted sock on it. We're gonna do the dry, uh, sorry, the wet bulb temperature with this wetted sock. And in order to wet it, I have this distilled water and there's a hole in the acrylic, which will allow me to get easy access to the wet bulb uh, thermocouple. So I will wet it thoroughly. That looks pretty good to me. Let me put this bottle aside. And then what we're gonna do is uh, I'm going to turn on the blower and you'll notice that the temperature of the, the dry bulb temperature doesn't really change much, but the wet bulb temperature will fall and fall due to evaporative cooling. And when that temperature stabilizes at a temperature that's significantly below the dry bulb temperature, that's when you record the temperatures um, that you can see over here on this part of the panel. Now we need to make sure that we have dialed in to the correct temperature. And I look over here, this says the wet bulb temperature is probe one, the dry bulb temperature is probe two. So over here on the panel, I have it set to two and one, and we can see the temperature displayed in Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna now, turn the blower to maximum and turn it on. Now we're going to determine some of the characteristics of this refrigeration system. And so what we're going to do is we're going to turn on the blower to have some air circulating, uh, but we're going to turn it down to its lowest setting. So I'm going to turn on the blower. So some uh, air is flowing through the top part of the circuit. And now we're going to turn on the compressor to activate the refrigeration cycle. And if you look at the pressure gauges down here, uh, and also at the flow rate meter, 
uh, they may vary in time as the system uh, starts reaching an equilibrium. Also, we have four temperatures that we need to look at. We have the condenser in, which is 13, the evaporator in, which is 11, condenser out, which is 14, and evaporator out, which is 12. And so once all these temperatures stabilize, that's when you record the four temperatures, and that's when you record the two pressures as well as the flow rate. After you've completed that task, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase the heating load on the evaporator by turning on these two preheaters, the 0.5 kilowatt preheater and the one kilowatt preheater. And once again, we will wait for the entire system to stabilize before recording the temperatures and pressures and flow rate. One interesting thing that you can do when you've turned off all the equipment is to just get an idea of how much the temperature really changes across the condenser and evaporator. So uh, we have here a compressor. Uh, actually, by touching the compressor, it's quite warm. Uh, and then if we take the outlet for the condenser line, if you touch it, be careful, it could be quite warm. Uh, it is very, very warm. In fact, I can't leave my hand on it too long or I'll get burned. Um, after we go through the condenser, we've rejected some heat to the environment and it's significantly cooler. It feels like it's room temperature actually. Now, as this uh, refrigerant continues to travel through the system, uh, just before the expansion valve, it's still roughly room temperature. But if you go after the expansion valve, it's actually quite cold and, and there's actually condensation uh, on the refrigerant line. And if you go across the evaporator, uh, it gets even colder. Uh, and there's even more condensation that's formed, even though we've just had it on for about a minute or so. And again, the refrigerant comes through here and eventually goes to the compressor where it is uh, heated up and the pressure is increased. The last thing that we're gonna do in this experiment is analyze some air conditioning processes. Before we do that, um, what we're gonna do is we are going to saturate the sock at the temperature probe five for the wet bulb temperature. Uh, temperature probe seven, so this is just after the evaporator, this is just before the evaporator at five, and then just past the reheater, we have nine. So we're gonna, we're gonna saturate five, seven, and nine. I've already done that to save us a little bit of time. And in this particular experiment, we're gonna be recording temperatures five, seven, and nine, which is the wet bulb temperatures, and also the dry bulb temperatures at the same location, six, eight, and 10. So what we're first gonna do is not have any heaters on. I'm gonna turn on the blower, set it to maximum. It's gonna get a little loud. We're gonna turn on the compressor to turn on the refrigeration system. And we're gonna wait. We're gonna wait for the wet bulb temperatures and the dry bulb temperature to stabilize. Additionally, we're gonna wait for the pressures in the uh, refrigeration cycle to also stabilize. When those have stabilized, that's when we record the six temperatures. Five, seven, nine, and six, eight, 10. After we've done that, we are then going to look at how uh, the air conditioning process changes when we turn on the preheater. So we've activated the preheater over here, increasing the temperature of the air that comes into the evaporator. Uh, and so this is kind of simulating a very hot uh, summer day. Once again, we allow all the different temperatures and the pressures to stabilize, and then we can record our six pressures, five, seven, nine, six, eight, 10. Lastly, we are gonna turn on the reheater. Both the 0.5 kilowatt and the one kilowatt uh, switches, which activates these two coils. And so this simulates uh, maybe people or electronics in the room that the conditioned air flows into. 
And once again, we wait for the temperatures and pressures to all stabilize before recording 5, 7, 9 and 6, 8, 10.